Hi everyone, I'm volcanologist Dr. Janine Kruppner and this is my guest. Hi, I'm Chris Newhall and I'm uh, signing in from in the Philippines uh, near the foot of my own volcano. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, you've seen such enormous improvements in the technology with monitoring volcanoes, with our global understanding of how volcanoes work still knowing that there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot left that we have to learn. But with all of this knowledge that we've accumulated as a global field, in hindsight, if you would go back to Mount St. Helens, the 1980 eruption, how would you approach trying to understand what that volcano might have done purely with retrospect? Well, you know the expression, uh, hindsight is always 20-20. And, and and in this case, it's it's even better than 2020 because it's been just an enormous amount of of uh, understanding of volcanoes that has been gleaned since 1980, plus the technologies, plus improved technologies, plus uh, improved uh, computer capability for, for data processing, all across the board. The the tools and the, the conceptual models that we have to work with now are, are much richer than they were back in 1980. Now, if you, um, at the time in 1980, uh, when, when St. Helens woke up, volcanologists had uh, just a few years earlier uh, come off crisis down at Sufria Guadalupe volcano. Uh, and there were, a number of things that were were still high in the uh, on the minds of, of volcanologists. Uh, questions of of whether uh, rest was magmatic or not, whether magma would erupt. Uh, also, uh, concerns about false alarms. So these were that's some of the background for for St. Helens. And then specifically at St. Helens, uh, those same questions about the phreatic magmatic uh, dichotomy came up in the first few days, uh, but then very quickly it became obvious that the yes, magma was involved because of the bulge on the north side. And then uh, following that and, and going through the rest of April and into early May, with the bulge growing as it was, there was a question about how to reconcile the what was being measured and observed in the bulging north flank of the volcano with the eruptive history of St. Helens, which um, at the time was not known to have had uh, large landslides. Now, in, in retrospect, we understand now that there, there had been some before, that there had been some blast before, but at the time, there were just the slightest hints of that in the geologic record. And so the, the best guess from the geologic side was a repeat of, of standard eruptions of St. Helens, vertically directed Plinian columns, and then later dome collapses. Uh, and and so that was kind of the the struggle through the uh, pre-eruptive run-up at St. Helens was to figure out what to make of of this bulge on the north flank. The um, their the advice that was going out to officials was based mainly on the uh, known eruptive history of St. Helens. Um, but then it was also clear that there, there had to be some, uh, some, some additional, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, notice taken of, of the uh, bulge that was going on and, and how to interpret that and what, what could that mean. Um, in retrospect now, we, we, we know that sector collapses and, and even lateral blasts are relatively common at volcanoes. And, and so now, 
I think volcanologists approaching it would, would that would be first and foremost on their list of, of what they would be trying to anticipate, trying to uh, judge, is it going to collapse? And if it's going to collapse, when? Um, and, and to um, correspondingly alert communities down at the foot. At St. Helens, we were lucky that, that uh, uh, the nearest community is a long way away. Uh, population was relatively sparse, uh, but there are many volcanoes around the world where there are large cities right down at the foot of volcanoes. And, and so in those cases, the question is much more critical. Um, I, th I think we've learned a, a tremendous amount about how magma rises in the volcanoes, about how it uh, prepares to erupt, uh, about interpretation of the geophysical and geochemical signs of that. But these are largely for uh, what I would call normal eruptions. Uh, there, we don't have uh, experience with modern monitoring at a volcano that had a sector collapse and lateral blast, except St. Helens. There haven't been any others. Well, actually, there's there's been one other since then. It was on a small scale on the south flank of Sufre uh, Hills volcano in Montserrat. And there was some deformation that was observed there and sign of pressurization of the hydrothermal system. And Barry Boyd and the other scientists who were there correctly called that one. They called on their St. Helens experience and they got people up the way. Um, that was, uh, that's the only other case I can think of right now that has occurred since St. Helens. Uh, and that kind of informs us on, on how uh, knowing what we know now, we might approach future St. Helens like crisis. Thank you so much. It's incredible to see how quickly our knowledge and our technology has grown then. And I think it's important to note how much of an incredible job the volcanologists did back then with very rudimentary tools and trying to understand how to approach this problem to begin with. So I really appreciate you taking us through what you would do now with hindsight, which you know they didn't have back then. So thank you so much for your time.